And I'm glad to, to listen to all the people that are just fellowshipping and having a great time this morning. I am. I am. I'm talking to myself. I'm excited to be here and excited to hear all the people loving on one another. Isn't this a great place to be? Yes. I would have waited for Sue to get se- uh, get seated before I got started, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. <laughs> but you know, wise people have said, we don't care when you quit, we just want you to start on time. Amen? So, consider us started this morning. Did I get some amens? Amen. Oh, my eyes. All right. That's right. My fear, now, on, on eating days, I do love to quit early, but a lot of times I hear from the kitchen, they're like, drag it out just a little bit more. The biscuits aren't warm, or so. I will quit when I get okay from the back. No, we can, we've got things that we can do after the service. Is it okay? Let's, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. <laughs> God bless you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you find humor something pleasing. I think God has a sense of humor, and He gave it to us. If you don't think God has a sense of humor, look at the platypus. Yeah. It'll blow your mind. A mammal with a duck bill and the male have venom. So, I mean, just a strange... I think God's just like, what are you going to do with this? Let me see how you handle the platypus. But he, he, he has created some wonderful things, hasn't he? Including you all, right? Wonderful things in the image of God. Well, let's praise Him. Let's worship Him today. Um, we'll start with some announcements of all the things that God's doing here at Calvary. Come on, sister. Good morning. Good morning. There she blinded me again. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. Uh, now see, I've already lost my train of thought here. The September calendar is available for us, and it's there on the uh, podium in the foyer area. And I'm just going to kind of list things that are going on right now here in September. Uh, as of today, you'll notice in your bulletin, we have leaflets and envelopes for the Eliza Broadus. Uh, season of prayer for state missions and this is for our Kentucky missionaries and our goal will be $500 if you want to put uh, cash or check in this envelope please do so and then make it out to the church and then put EBO in the memo section if you'll notice <coughs> excuse me if you'll notice in your leaflet I had it marked here on day two it talks about the Kentucky disaster relief And right now, they're in full swing in eastern Kentucky, uh, helping those folks out there. Okay, now I've got some ambiance, thank you. (laughs) Um, So, uh, just know that what you're giving to the Eliza Broadus offering, one of the things that it goes to is the Kentucky Disaster Relief. And then, of course, to help them out just recently, the church has sent them a thousand dollars, excuse me, thousand dollars to help in the Eastern Kentucky flooding relief. Um, we've already started our Operation Bless Frankfurt. If you want to give to that, there are envelopes in the back of the church for that. So please do so. Um, today we're having, we're going to eat, of course, our potluck dinner <coughs> and new member recognition. So please stay for that. Uh, tomorrow night is the WMU Mission Retreat Dinner. If you've signed up for that, be aware of that. Uh, Brother Rusty's Bible Study is Tuesday at 1. Uh, that night, we will have the Homeless Mats Ministry at 6.30. And then on the 21st of September, on Wednesday night at 6.30, we have our business meeting. Uh, the rummage sale will be Saturday, September the 24th at 8 a.m. If you, uh, There's a sign-up sheet for that in the back. So they'll know how many spaces to give you. So if you want to secure uh, a spot there to sell your items, please sign up for that. And if you have any questions on it, please see Linda Mitchell about that. Good morning. morning. Yeah, I can see you. It's good to see you. You know, that is, glasses, which ones do you wear? Jesus' name is wonderful, counselor, mighty God. We call him the rock of all ages in the great shepherd. Let's sing about that. 
I'll bet most of you won't even need to look at your words. If you do, they're on your bulletin. Just stay in your seats for right now. Let's sing together. His name is wonderful. before you this morning. We want to love and adore you more today than we did yesterday. Help us, Father, to learn and to grow and to share while we're here this morning. Thank you for the opportunity that we have together in your name. We pray these things in the wonderful name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, turn with me in your hymnal, if you would, to hymn number 300. 35. Now, I guess that we can't be sitting on the premises while we sing about standing on the promises, so we better stand as we sing it. 335. Standing. Seventy-one. 
There's three of those most wonderful promises at the top of the page. Love, mercy, and grace. It doesn't get any better than unconditional love, amazing love, mercy, and grace. Let's read responsively. If you're new to this, that means I'll read alone the ones in the not bold print, and you read with me on the bold print. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And these verses were from Psalms 103. Amen. I have a scripture before I sing this morning. It's from Hebrews 11:6, and I'm reading from the New International Version. And without faith, is it, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him.
Thank you, Terry. Let's sing together once more. Lord, here I am, or as the song says, here am I. 486 is where you'll find it. forward to receive the morning tithes and offerings. <laughs> Mike, would you ask God's blessings on our offerings?
saw Lloyd walking back through there after taking up the offering with Randy beside him, and I thought, well, that looks like a rock star with his bodyguard. <laughs> I felt safer already. Uh, we're, with Randy on the job, he could keep Lloyd safe. There's no doubt in that. <laughs> Lloyd, you look good, brother. It's good to see you this morning. Thanks for helping out. He, he's always willing to help out and serve. Uh, we miss you. We miss you. We, we, uh, we, you, you left an in, infillable place. Um, yeah. When you come back, he can feel your presence. It's, it's great to have you with us, uh, brother. It's good to look out and see such a crowd here this morning um, to worship our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. And um, to reflect on his glory and his grace. Um, we, I had an opportunity earlier with Cheryl in the back, and we were rifling through some different scripture to look at. And we got to talking about God's grace and how we've witnessed it in several places in our life. And then we've seen other people that were just overcome by God's grace in situations that you wouldn't think people could find grace, but they did. So God's, God's all-powerful, amen? He can do anything in our life that needs to be done, amen? amen? He can fill us this morning with His glory. He can fill us with an appreciation of Him. He can fill us with praise. He can fill us with adoration. He can fill us to the top with holiness. And graciousness if we're open to Him. Amen? Have you noticed that it seems like the people that are open to God get filled with God? It seems like the people that are open to God's guidance get led by God? I mean, it seems like the people that are open to God's fellowship are those that find fellowship with God. There's so many people that, that I've talked to throughout the years that just can't find their place in the world, yet at the same time they don't want to get where God says you need to get. They, they don't have an interest, a desire, a thirst, a hunger, if you will, for the things of God. And, and, and in Acts today, now you'll notice in your bulletin, I left mine over here. Um, you'll notice in your bulletin, it's got listed the sermon title today. But for a temporary time and for the right price, I'll change that and shorten the verses. Look in there, it is... Uh, um, Acts 16, 11 through 40. How many of you are looking forward to that? You know how many stories there are in Acts 16, 11 through 40? So, I thought, well, I might auction it off um, to, for a shorter version. How about Acts 16, 11 through 15? I just, I just need to know, is there any banana pudding back there? We'd go get some. How about gravy for mashed potatoes? Do we have any gravy back there? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Somebody's trying to get that shorter, shorter sermon. Well, this morning as I was, as I was putting the polishing and the, and the finishing touches on, on, on the complicated, lengthy sermon that I started off with earlier in the week, uh, God just impressed upon me. He said, how about we just talk about Lydia today? Uh, let's, let's, let's let this story unfold maybe over a couple weeks, a few weeks. But let's look at Lydia today. And I got to thinking about it. I thought, what a great thing to do. I don't know that I personally have ever preached a message solely on Lydia. Now, there's a whole lot to Lydia. So, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 16. And if you'll listen fast, I'll speak fast and we'll eat soon. Amen? <laughs> can you all smell the food? Yeah. That can make for a long sermon. <laughs> People sitting there smelling food, they can't think of anything but how hungry they are, and they're not normally this hungry. But that's how it goes. But in Acts 16, last time we looked in Paul, he, he, he met up with Timothy, and he wanted so desperately to go into a place that God didn't want him to go. So, so I want to start off by saying that God was open to redirection of his ideas. So, so we're, we're going to talk about people that are open to... To God And some of the things that went on in their life so that they could be open to the movement of God. So the very first one had to be Paul. Paul was open to go to a different area. Remember he had a vision. Do you remember what he saw in the vision? A man from Macedonia. Now, that's interesting. He saw a man from Macedonia. So let's read our text. Acts 16 verse 11 says, So setting sail from Troas... We made a direct voyage to Samothrace and the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, 
which is the leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days. So, so here we have a Roman colony. Now, it's very specific that we understand that. Philippi has a very long history. It goes back to about 350 years before Christ as a settlement there. And in all that time, there's been lots of wars fought there because it's, it's near a seaport. It's, it's a great place, and there's also a main road that Rome built through there that, that trade and wars could travel on. So Philippi was kind of a hotbed for action. It's named after Philip. Well, that just makes sense, doesn't it? So it's, it's named, and, and so it was after a conquering, back in the days of the Caesars, after a conquering and a battle where some of the people that kind of came against the Roman, Roman government back when they were a republic, before they were an empire, there was some fighting that went on and, and some guys were defeated that were, that, were, that were nasty guys and they needed to be defeated. They named this city after Philip. And so you have Philippi. Philippi is a great place. There's a lot of gold mines in the area. That'll, that'll bring people in every time, won't it? Not only is there gold mines, but there's also several rivers and it's kind of a, a great place to be. So Paul is headed for Macedonia. God gave him a vision of a man from Macedonia. So here he is. He arrives in this place called Philippi. We have the book of Philippians that was written to the church at Philippi. So, so this is a place that's, that's dear to Paul. And when, and when he gets there, after they got there, now what's interesting about it being a Roman colony is after all the fighting and battling goes on, uh, Rome decides to make this a fortified city, to make it really, really strong so that it can't be taken over, will provide incentives to retired veterans. So, so a, a, a retired veteran from, from the Roman legion could, could move there, especially generals. Generals had lots of perks. But they could move there once they retired and they would not have to pay taxes. Well, that would draw you right in immediately. Think about Florida. How many people want to get to Florida because there's different taxes? So, so you have these generals that are retiring in Philippi, and, and it's colonized that way. And that's what they mean by it. It was a Roman colony. It was a place where retired Roman vets were there. So it's a fairly safe place to be because you had these guys you could call up at any time, and, and they made it their business to make this place safe because they were living there with their family, and they wanted to be there because they didn't have to pay taxes. So you can see this is a place that Paul went into. It's very Roman, very, very... Very Roman, not very Jewish. We, we've come into Macedonia, not very Jewish. And, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Let's, let's read just a little bit further. Um, a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. So they've been there for a few days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. So listen to this. On a Sabbath day, what was Paul's normal function on a Sabbath day? He would go into the synagogue and he would begin to reason Christ with the Jews that had gathered there. So here we are in Philippi on a Sabbath day and he doesn't go to the synagogue. You know why? There's no synagogue. Now, under Jewish rules and the way they set things up, you had to have ten males in a city that resided there that were Jewish before you could build a synagogue. So that kind of tells us a little bit about Philippi right now. There weren't ten Jewish men there. So they had to have a place of prayer out by a river. And they, they always would go by living water. So because they had it for ritual bathing and those kind of things to cleanse and things like that for their times of prayer. So, so first of all, there's not ten families there. There's not ten families in this city that are Jewish so that they can have a synagogue. So Paul can't go there. He, but he realizes, it says he supposed that there'd be a gathering place out by the river because that's how they did it when there weren't enough Jewish people. Now, Philippi's a big city. It's a big city. There's a lot going on here, but not ten Jewish families. This was Paul's call. He was called to Gentiles. Now, there are some Jewish people in the area, so he still goes out there looking for a place of prayer, supposing that it would be there. And what did he find? He found nine men gathered for prayer, waiting for the tenth guy to show up. No! It's not what he found at all. He found women holding it down. He found a gathering of ladies that were dedicated to prayer. He, found, he also found out there, and we're going to see her in just a second, this lady named Lydia, probably not Jewish. We don't really know a lot about Lydia. This is basically the bulk of her story right here. But she is the first convert in Europe. 
So we, 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 we took some time to look at Cornelius, It's the first Gentile convert. Remember that? And, and we've looked at, you know, the first along the way. Well, this is the first convert as Paul goes into Europe. She's known as the first uh, uh, European convert. And here's what I like. Y'all know the history of what it was like back in that day. She's female. She's a woman. You know, when a woman's name shows up in Scripture, you better pay close attention because it's important. Because the mindset in that day, and you all understand this very well, the mindset in that day is that women didn't have a lot to add. The mindset in that day uh, where they would be seen and not heard. I mean, that was the mindset in that day. There's nothing taken away from it. But we've got this lady, Lydia, who is completely, she's going to blow the lid off of that kind of thinking. So, so let's read just a little bit more. It said, um, I, I, I didn't flip my page, I flipped it back. He supposed to be a place of prayer there. So they sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. Listen to that. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia. Lydia. So Paul goes out there and he finds these, these ladies that are gathered. Most of them are probably Jewish. They're probably Jews and, and they're sitting there and this is what they normally do. But you've got this lady named Lydia who is a believer in God. So somehow or another, where she's from, Thyatira. Now Thyatira is an interesting place because they were known for dyeing purple garments. Now, you think, no big deal. I've got purple in my house. Not this purple. This purple was made from seashells, a crustacean that they could extract the dye from. And it was a very royal purple. And the, the, the more purple, so if they did a double dip on it, if they dyed it twice, it was far more expensive. And so here we are in a place full of generals from the Roman army. Guess what they like to wear? Purple. It was known as royal purple. It was something that was seen even to this day. It's a very pricey way to dye purple. But this place called Thyatira also had a way to do it cheaper with a root. But it wasn't the same purple. So she's from a place that was known for dyeing cloth. And known, she's a merchant. She's a person who's involved in her life. And, and, but she's, she's traveling around. She's from Thyatira. She's traveled down. There's a lot of people who try to say, well, Lydia once was a slave. That's why she's called Lydia, because she's from a place named Lydia. And they named slaves after their place of origin. Uh, that, that could be it, it, but there's no evidence, there's no proof for that. We just know that she's from Thyatira. She's from the area of Lydia. She's named Lydia. And she has traveled down here, and she is a believer. Somewhere along the line, now in Thyatira, there are lots of Jewish people. There are, there's a great cohort of Jewish people in Thyatira. So she's, she's run into Jewish people, and she's a believer in God. Now that means, it doesn't mean that she is a Christian. That's not where she's at. But she recognized the one God of Israel. So somebody's had an influence on her, and she's down by the riverside gathering for prayer. I tell you what, there's something to be said about gathering for the purpose of prayer. I wonder what they're praying for when they gather. I wonder if it's that maybe some men would show up and help out. Maybe, maybe we could just get some Jewish men down here. We'd get a synagogue, and we'd have a proper place that we could gather, and that we could pray, and that we could serve the Lord. Maybe, maybe they're praying uh, for, their, for their husbands who are sitting back at the house, won't even bother to come down for prayer meetings. Does that sound familiar? They're out there praying. Faithful. Sabbath day. Got an amen and a <clears throat> at the same time. Same couple. We'll be offering counseling a little later. But, it, but it's interesting. These people, these, these ladies are so dedicated. And this is a section of scripture. Four verses. Well, five. Five verses. That you can just skip over almost. You can read these real fast and okay, here's Lydia. Uh, they're down by the creek. They're praying and just go on. And because and, 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 the very next thing is you've got a demoniac that gets a demon cast out of her. So you've got Lydia who's faithful. And then the next one is a, a female demoniac who's probably in the position she's in because of choices in her life. Lydia's in the position she's in because of choices in her life. That's a whole other sermon series. You can compare and contrast the two different women in this one passage. But then after that, the stars of the show take over and they get thrown in jail, which we'll get to later. Paul and Silas. 
So, so Lydia can be overshadowed by the dynamic verses that come following her and the dynamic verses that come before her. But this morning, I thought this would be a great day just to kind of look at Lydia. Um, you know, we've already looked at the fact that Paul had his eyes open to a vision that was different than he was expecting. We read here, she was open to worship and prayer. She was open to gathering. Oh, I'm fixing the medal now. Let me ask you something. Is coming to the gathering important? It is, isn't it? Now, isn't it great that if, if we can't make it in like we're sick or we've fallen or we're sick again, <laughs> that we have Facebook and YouTube. Isn't that great? But you can't live off of it. You can't live. Because, see, God didn't design just the preached message. God didn't just say, I want you to hear all the words you can possibly get. What did he say? He said, I want you to gather together. And a matter of fact, in Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, whoever that was, says, you know, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But get together and encourage one another. He says, as you see the day, the bad stuff approaching, do it more often. Getting together is important. So, so I, I, I want to believe that Lydia, Paul's eyes were opened to, to Macedonia. He wasn't ready for that, but that's where God wanted him to go. Because God had this little lady who's probably not even Jewish. And she gathers by the creek every Sabbath morning faithfully. Why? To pray. To pray. Now it's interesting. You want to clear out a crowd. Say, say we're going to have a singing. And you can fill the house up. Say we're going to spend an hour in just quiet prayer and meditation. It'll be almost empty. I can pray at home. People say the same thing. I can worship at home. Well, I hope you do. But you can't replace the gathering. See, I believe that Lydia was in the right place in her heart. I believe she, was, she believed in God. Somebody had gotten to her and she had an understanding of God. And so God rerouted Paul and his all-star lineup. Think about it. Paul. Did he write any of the New Testament? Luke? He write any of the New Testament? You realize that the bulk of the New Testament was written by these two people? Luke actually wrote more words than Paul wrote. Paul wrote more books than Luke wrote. The bulk of your New Testament was written by these two guys. Are they a powerhouse? That's, that's God's dream team. And just for fun, you throw in Timothy. And this other guy, Silas, who was dedicated to the Lord. This is a gathering of power and influence in the early church. That's unbelievable. They came from the first mega church, Antioch Baptist. And they were on the teaching team there. Could you imagine? Pick your Sunday school class. You could have Barnabas. You could have Paul. Right? And God opens Paul's eyes to his vision because he's got this little lady that there won't be much written about at all named Lydia. And her life is open to the influence of God. As far as I can tell, she's not Jewish and she's gathering with these Jewish ladies. I wonder if she wasn't just a little bit off to the side. You know, Gentile. Y'all know how that went, right? Jew, Gentile. It was like, ooh... Right? Remember the woman at Samaria? Ooh. What's he doing talking to her? She's a dog. But Jesus showed his love for her. Jesus had gotten Lydia out of Thyatira. And got her down to Philippi. Where there wasn't enough Jews to even wad, to, to wad a shotgun. I mean just a few ladies that gathered by the creek. And Lydia was gathering with them. And she had... Money. She had, she, she's, she's Roman. She could own her own business. She had her own stuff. But she's by the creek side with these ladies. And she's open to learning about God. What happens? Paul shows up. He finds these Jewish ladies. And he goes and just kind of gets where they're at. And he begins to talk about Jesus. 
he begins to talk about this Jewish rabbi that was crucified and hung on a cross and died for our sins and that he was the prophesied Messiah that was going to come and save Israel from their sin. And sitting off there is this little lady named Lydia. And she's a believer. Probably knows about the promise of the Messiah. But hadn't heard that the Messiah had come yet. And so as Paul began to explain Jesus, the text goes on and says that God opened her heart to understand. You think that's important? You ever, you ever known people in your life that have heard the gospel but never received the gospel? They've heard it preached their whole life and then one time they'll say, well I didn't know that. So you've been in church your whole life. You were a drug baby. You were drugged from the moment you were born to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night and Wednesday night. What do you mean you've never? I just never heard that before. It never clicked. You know why? God has to open the heart. That's why we keep preaching and we keep preaching. And that's why occasionally I'll have an invitation because I don't know that one of you sitting in here will go, well, I've never actually been saved. I thought I was. I had a Sunday school teacher get saved one time at a church. Because in, in part of the class we were in, we had to write our testimony down. And the testimony is real simple. Write your testimony in a simple way so that you can tell somebody else how you got saved. Well, they began to write, and they're like, I can't find a salvation moment in my life. I can't find it. I've just always gone to church. I, I just assumed that I was saved. Well, I got a chance to lead a Sunday school teacher to the Lord. Amen? Amen? Some people got upset with that. They said there's no way she wasn't a Christian. One of the finest people they've ever met. Well, that's, what it takes. that's not what it takes to be a Christian. Just to be a good person. Some of y'all are lousy, but you're Christians. Amen? <laughs> Right? I always call myself God's junkyard dog. And I don't know that you got a blessing when you got me. But God's got a purpose for us, doesn't he? He's got to keep... You know, I think sometimes... Brother, you may testify. Sometimes it's his wilder children he has to put into ministry so he can keep them close. Because there's a little bit of fear of... of, of you know, you got to stand up on Sunday morning and preach the Word of God. That'll keep you closer to the cross. Amen? But if you've got a week or a month or a year or a decade off, there's no telling how far we'd get. God's got some. God's got some people that just you wonder and say, I, I, I just can't believe God saved them. And then there's some people that we're going to be blown away. Just met some of the best people in the world, just kind, but they don't know Jesus. Now you tell me, is there a difference being kind and knowing Jesus? You know, what, is, what does the Bible say with Jesus? One of some of the saddest verses in the Scripture when we have a picture of Jesus saying, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And they'll say, But Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We, we proclaimed Jesus. We were, we were into that stuff. And, and we were doing all kinds of things. And Jesus says, I don't know you. You think it's important to be known by God? Yeah. I think Lydia was known by God. And so he said, you know, the closest agents I've got to where Lydia's at is this ragtag band of guys, Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke. Let me send them over there to this one girl. Here's the thing. Pick up the book to Philippians that Paul wrote. She's not in it. Now, you would think when Paul wrote back to Philippi that the very first convert in Europe, Lydia, would be listed in that letter unless she had multiple names she went by, which she could have. She's not written to. We don't know where she went. We don't know what else she got involved with. I try to figure it out myself. I think she went back to Thyatira. Now, Thyatira mentioned in Revelation. I think she went back there. I think she went back to her family. But I can't prove it. But I know that right here in this moment, she was open to the teaching of God. And God opened her heart so that she could receive. He opened her heart. It says, this it says, One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was being said by Paul. The priest's word is important. And faith cometh by... Hearing and hearing by the word of God. You think gathering is important? Yes, yes it's important. Gather. It's one of the things he's commanded us to do. And, and, and listen to what it says right after that. 
And after she was baptized in her whole household as well. So this kind of cuts to the chase. He leaves us to assume that she received Christ as her Savior. He, he leaves us to assume all the other conversation and all the other things because obviously from that creek side, they went back to her house and began to preach to her household and they began to share with the household. And, and then listen to what she says. Not only did she, did God, did, was she open to God and God opened her heart and He opened up Europe Christianity through her, she also opened her home to the dream team. Look what it says. Come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. I like she says, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord. Now she's got money. She didn't say, Let me go ask my husband. If there was one, it would have been listed there. She didn't say, Let me check with my older brother. Because if there was one, she would have said that. She said, if you judge me faithful, would you come to my house and hang out a little while? The dream team. She prevailed. You see what Luke wrote? She prevailed upon us. Now, if you didn't notice it last week, there was the first we mentioned in the book of Acts. And when they move on from here, Paul, uh, Luke is going to write, they moved on. So I don't know if he hung around Philippi for a little while or not. I'm not sure, but when you see a we in the text, that means that Luke himself was with the party. He just joined the party, but he's part of all this. She said, would you come hang out at my house? She opened her home to God's people. You reckon God blessed that house? Oh my, could you imagine? That's next to Mary and Martha having Jesus, right? It's not that, but it's next to that. You got Paul, you got Luke, you got Silas, you got Timothy. And they're all, and she says, come. You, you know, she had a pretty good sized house. Here's what's interesting. She also opened up her house to be the church gathering place. Look with me down in verse 40 of the same chapter. Now, don't fear, I'll come back and get the rest of it next time. So this is after they get out of prison. Okay? Now, what did I say she was? She's an entrepreneur. She's a merchant, right? She has a, a, a title. She's part of the guild out of Thyatira of, of the dyers, and, and she's part of the business community. You know, she's the Better Business Bureau knows about her, and they're keeping their eye on her kind of thing. Are you worthy to be part of it? Now, anybody in here, well, don't raise your hand, but if you've ever owned a business, you kind of sometimes you've got to walk a, a wiggly line, you know, to maintain. You've got to shake the right babies. And kiss the right hands to, to, to keep your job and your place in the community, right? You, you've got to, sometimes you've you got to be careful who you hang out with. So Paul and Silas get cast in jail. And when they got out, they went back to Lydia's house. And she said, come on in. She was open to the ridicule and the trouble that hanging out with Paul. Sometimes it doesn't matter what trouble you get in. Sometimes it's just the right thing to do. Have you ever, you ever noticed how sometimes we can't tell what's right because we get to thinking about what somebody might think? What somebody might think doesn't affect what's right, but it's common these days. I love it. She opened her home to them. And look what it says in verse 40. It says, So they went out of the prison, visited Lydia, and when they had seen the brothers, they encouraged them and departed. And a lot of people are saying that the, the church at Philippi began in Lydia's house. That, that not only did she get saved, she had plenty of room that she could invite you know, the entourage over. And she had the, the whole entourage in her house. And then the, I mean, the um, Philippian jailer, we're going to read about him a little bit later on. He's part of this brand new church as well. Him and his household, they had a place to gather. They could gather at Lydia's house. Lydia had a home church. She was a leader of a home church. That'll mess with a lot of people's theology, won't it? God opened up Europe through Lydia. She was ready. She was seeking him. She was hungry for the gathering, for the prayer. She was, she was in the right place at the right time and God sent the right people. And the rest is history. So we have a, a strong female role model here who followed the Lord no matter what it cost her. 
who stayed focused. Uh, and, and she was well known. Now, there's a whole lot of things that are blown up about Lydia that you can't know. Um, there's a whole lot of things we can't know on her. But the things that we can know are contained right here. She was a God-fearer. And God opened her heart. She received Jesus and she opened her home. And she opened up Europe through her. A story that's overlooked a lot. You almost want to, you know, wonder if they didn't re want to rewrite it and put some guy's name in there. You know, some nice big Roman mm, name. But here's little Lydia who quietly received Christ when she heard the truth preached. Became a born again child of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's, have a, let's have a word of prayer this morning before we um, close things down. I'd like to encourage you to reflect upon your own salvation this morning. Are you confident that you are a born again believer? If you're not, I'd love to talk to you about it. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to draw you out. Like I said, I, I've, I've, I've had a chance to lead Sunday school teachers. So you can talk about embarrassing. To have to be a Sunday school teacher for all that time and then realize you're not even a born-again believer. If, if the Lord calls, today's the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. Amen? If you need to talk to me about that, we're going to have some music play in just a second. I'd like for you to get up from your seat and walk down here and talk to me. I'll turn my mic off and we'll make time. We'll also get to eat. Don't, don't get me wrong. We'll eat. But I'd like to make time to talk to you about your soul. If there's anything else you need to talk to me about, you can talk to me at any time. You can walk this aisle. In a few moments, we're going to be breaking bread together. We're going to celebrate our new members here at the church. It's an exciting time, amen? amen. I love that. Not just because we're getting ready to eat, though, right? <laughs> She's going to come play. And if you need to speak with me for any reason whatsoever, just make your way down. We'll hold, the invita we'll hold this invitation this time of, of, of playing as long as we need to. But it's important that you be open to the movement of the Spirit in your life. That you're where you need to be. Maybe you're looking for a place to join. You're looking for a church home. This be an opportunity. Matter of fact, let's just change it up. Let's sing a song, Brother Tony. Let's go ahead and have an invitation. Will that be okay? If the Lord's speaking to your life, maybe, maybe you're looking for a church home. Maybe you've never been saved. Maybe you've never been baptized. You'd like to be baptized. Maybe you've just got things going on in life you just need to talk about. Let's take an opportunity to have an invitation. The food will wait for us. Amen. Here's what we'll do. If you, need to, if you need to move, you move. We won't sing long, okay? You move, and we'll wait, okay? Brother, what are we going to sing? Sing 300. 300, thank you. 300 without this stand. Come on, come on.